On Thursday, you may have received a notification I'd uploaded a video onto YouTube. I had. Some of you viewed the video. But after viewing the video, video on a large screen, my TV, I deleted the video. It was on for about an hour, but it was not up to standard. The rain on the camera lens was worse than I thought, causing distortion. I apologise to anyone who went looking for it. The video was of the night taxi run November the 5th. Sorry about that, so let's go back to the restoration. Right, progress is ongoing on the river to the Doncaster Fuselage. I'm not sure why they've left these skin pins in. This plate for lining up the control rods. Hey, that's good. Yes. yes, exactly. We, we've got the drawings and everything for the, uh, the performers. Yeah. Um, so all this is doing is doing a check. And check. So what we're going to do is the centre of the nose frame here will be here and here. An existing um, former as well. Yeah. What we're going to do is do the centre, put some locking wire through, or some wire or some string or whatever, around the front there where we know it. It ends in the existing structure, yeah. so we know the alignment. So it's a double check. Yeah, keep it in the straight line, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Hopefully. These are the square guys for the rudder and elevator controls. This is one of the damaged formers from the fuselage showing the square control guides. The refurbished guides, the round one also is a control guide. The control rods from the cockpit are circular, right up to a few feet from the rudder and elevator when they're changed to a square tube, as you see here, and then back to a round to connect to the rudder and elevator. They move in a horizontal movement, not circular. Day 3 used a line for guidance, he also used a laser. He has to cut out the formers to fit the guides and clearance for the tubes in the other formers. I made my way over to Just Jane to check out how it will be when it is finished. You can see the control tube running down the side of the fuselage heading towards a cockpit. These are connected to the control column. Heading back to the tail section past the flare chute, you can see where they change to a square section. Then back to a round tubular section. The bottom tubes goes to the elevator, the top to the rudder.
Norman's having a couple of days off, so Dave's working on fitting the fuselage floor. Nothing to report from Keith today, he's having a week off. This is the first skin in the leading edge which we covered last week in video 170. Phil's showing Jacob how to cut lightning holes in aluminium and which tools he is. It's like a glove on a chicken's lip. <laughs> <laughs> That's your lightning hole, is it? Yeah, it's a lightning hole. Just to let some water out and that. Um, Strengthen it as well. Yeah, it'll um, make it more rigid. But um, basically, these bits that are on the side, they'll be riveted up. And uh, it's going to be a scoop for cleaning out the ruts in the hanger, um, the hanger runners. Oh yeah, yeah. So it'll scoop the leaves out without you having to get your hands in there. Good, well done. <laughs> Underside the fuselage still has Zero to be riveted. <laughs> When you start talking quiet, I know <laughs> things aren't quite right. Right, we had a comment from CMG video 169 about the Proctor project. Uh, the fuselage is in that hangar, but none or little progress in the last two years. All the staff energy is on the main project, the Lancaster. I also believe the wings are in storage. Yeah, and they say the doorway's nearly finished. Yeah. And what do you say? Oh, you've got all the top done now, have you? Yeah. With Norman back, Dave has finished riveting the starboard side. The hard steel step in the doorway, I believe, will be bolted on. It's a good bit of riveting. Yeah, Dave's uh, started doing the floor as well. I 
have to chop that frame, frame 32, to yeah. slide it in. <coughs> slide it in. Oh. Suiting like a glove, fit perfect. <laughs> It's even nice and nice and flat with the huge lock. Oh, yeah. yeah. Does the shoe come this way? Yeah, but um, I don't think we're going to actually cut a hole in the skin for this. No. Yeah. So no. we haven't got a spare shoe, so the shoe of yeah. Jane, the top bit. Come on there, it, yeah. It may line it, may not. Yeah. If not, it it was a few to saw water bottle in it. <laughs> 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 I'm sure Liz will make use of it. Yeah. You've got two sheets of the floor done, yeah, haven't you? Yeah. So once you've riveted the bottom section up, yeah. Um, big bit of floor will go down. The end one will stay up because you need access to the bolts around the ring at the end to connect it. So yeah. that last bit of floor can't go down to it's all yeah. bolted up. And I've got two more sections of floor to make to go. Are they um, pop riveted as well? Yeah, they are. Pop, riveted. pop riveted on, yeah. yeah. So they're nice and quick. Yeah. And that's the, the yeah. So the, that's what the, the top bit is. What the inside. So that 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 little top, that little narrow shoot panel there, that's the inside colour. That's the difference between the primer and the inside colour. Oh. When we got it, we realised it's played the wrong side. We got, might have been us labelled it wrong. But. <laughs> Oh, so that's the inside colour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then this is the brine. Yeah. I noticed. Um, no, that was on the old skins. Where is when he sprayed the frame? Yeah. He didn't do all of it, did he? No. He left gaps on the skins. Yeah. Some of, some of the paint that's in there is flaking off, so we're going to have to maybe do some paint scraping off first, mm. so so he can. Otherwise, when he sprays over the top, it'll just yeah. peel off again. Yeah. Yeah, I need a bit of prepping. Yeah, that might be next week prepping now, prepping the inside of the frame. Well, day three is making a racket.